Hey Miles, what are you doing? Me, I'm just putting my makeup brushes into this super cute little makeup brush pouch. What else have you got in that little pouch? Well, I'm gonna show you. I've made these little makeup removers. Um, you can make them yourself by following the blog post um, on our um, website at fabricana.com. Today, we're gonna be showing you how to make this little pouch. It's super great, obviously, for makeup brushes, but it would be really good for paint brushes as well, or maybe even some woodworking tools. So you can totally customize it uh, for the purpose that you're using it for and for the person that you're making it for using fun prints and colors that they like. Um, where you don't need a pattern, so we'll give you all the instructions for the cutting and sewing. This is a beginner-friendly project. I do want to show you what it looks like when it's wrapped up. So I'm just going to quickly wrap that up. I'm going to wrap the strap around and tie it. It's ready to go. I do also want to show you that with this nice handy strap, you could always hang the pouch so that everything is accessible without needing a lot of counter space. So with that said, um, I want to invite you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, subscribe to their YouTube channel, there's lots of great content. Um, and without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started with any cutting or sewing, we need to talk about the materials that we need. And um, the first thing that I've got here is this nice medium weight canvas. Um, it's 100% cotton. It's available on our website in this beautiful royal blue color. Um, it's item 17341. If you want to use a different fabric, like a, uh, maybe like a faux leather, that would also be great. Just keep in mind, if you're going to be doing any pressing, to be very careful when you're pressing around a faux leather, you don't want it to melt. Or you can take a lighter weight fabric and apply an interfacing or a lightweight, even a lightweight batting would be suitable just to give it a bit more body. Um, the next really fun fabric we have here, um, this is a really fun kind of fashionista inspired print. It's printed with all these cute sunglasses on it in this fun yellow color. Um, this is uh, style number 25282 on our website if you want this specifically. But of course, a solid would work. Um, another print that maybe suits the person you're making this for uh, would also work. Uh, again, this is 100% cotton, so no need to worry about um, pressing. Um, these are both 100% cotton. It's recommended if you're using cottons or other fabrics that might shrink to pre-wash them. Um, other materials that we'll need, I'm using a 9 inch dress weight zipper. I've got some thread, a nice high quality Guterman thread to match the royal blue canvas. You'll need a fabric marker. I'm just going to be using some regular Taylor's chalk. It's my preference. Um, I've got some dressmaker pins. You will need um, some fabric scissors or a rotary cutter. I'll be using a rotary cutter. It's just a nice fast way of doing straight lines and this is all straight lines for this project. And I'll be using this quilting ruler. Um, again, straight lines. It goes in conjunction with the mat. Um, if you're using scissors, you can use your fabric marker and your ruler in conjunction to make all the pieces. Uh, of course, you'll need a working sewing machine with a straight stitch and an iron and ironing board. Um, so I think that's all we need. We're ready to get started. Let's go. The first thing we're going to start cutting is the canvas or whichever fabric you're using for the outside of your um, pouch. Um, now, I want to straighten out the one cut edge. Um, it doesn't always come from the fabric store perfectly straight. So you do want to have a nice straight edge to work with. So again, I'm using a rotary cutter and a ruler. Um, if you haven't worked with a rotary cutter before, please don't just attempt it without um, doing a bit of research about safety uh, with rotary cutters because they are very, very sharp. Um, if you're using scissor and ruler and marker, just mark a straight line and cut that with your scissors. Once I have a straight line, I'm going to cut a two inch strip across the whole width of the fabric. This is gonna be for the tie um, to wrap our bag up at the end. Um, and I'm gonna cut that first so we don't forget about it. Just mark a, a line at two inches and simply cut across the width of the fabric. There we go. And then our main piece for the back of our bag is 10 and a half by 30 inches. So I'm going to open up the leftover piece of fabric that I have. 
Now I have a selvage um, at the edge of my fabric, which we don't want to use. So again, I'm just gonna cut that off. Now the piece that I wanna create is, I'm gonna look at my notes, it's 30 inches by 10 and a half inches. So I'm actually gonna cut the 30 inches first. I'm just gonna rotate my mat. I'm gonna use my mat actually as a guide because it's longer, uh, 30 inches is longer than the ruler that I have. So I'm gonna put that nice, perfect, clean edge where I cut the selvage off at the zero line. And then I'm going to cut at the 30 inch mark on my mat. If you have a measuring tape, you can just mark your 30 inch um, length with your measuring tape. And then I've got that other straight line that I cut previously. I'm just gonna fold my piece in half so I can cut it double, cut it twice as fast. Actually, I can do the same thing here using my mat as a guide, putting that nice straight edge on the zero. lining up my ruler so that I've got 10 and a half inches. And there we have our 10 and a half inch by 30 inch piece. We're ready to move on and cut out the pretty lining. So I've got my beautiful, fun fashionista print here. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as I did with my canvas and I'm going to straighten out um, the cut edge just so I know that it's perfectly straight. I'm only taking off about a half inch or so. Now for these pieces, um, I need two pieces that are 10, 10 and a half inches, the same as the canvas. Um, I need two pieces 10 and a half by 18. So my fabric folded in half is 22, so if I cut the two pieces um, kind of stacked, I won't be wasting too much fabric. So I'm going to take that nice straight line to measure just like we did for the canvas. So you want 10 and a half inches. Set the other piece aside. We'll need that in a minute. And cut off the selvages. We don't want those included in our project. And then I'm going to cut the 18 inches that I need. See if I can do this all in one take. <laughs> The next piece that I need is also 10 and a half inches, but only by 13. So I'm going to cut the 10 and a half inches like I did before using the mat as a guide. So then I only need a single piece of this one that's 10 and a half by 13. So I'm going to open up my fabric, I'm going to remove the one selvage. So those are the three pieces that I need in the print. I have a nice big chunk of this fabric left over for a future project. And now we are ready to start doing some construction. So before we start sewing and pressing, let's just kind of talk about what we're doing. Um, we've got our piece for the back. Um, that's pretty obvious, I hope. Um, and then we've got our two pieces that we cut that are the same size. Now one of those is going to get pressed in half with the wrong sides together, and that's going to become the little pocket for our brushes. We're going to stitch little channels to keep the brushes separate, but that um, piece will be stitched on top to become a little pocket. And then the, um, that will kind of, you remember that the kind of size of these pieces is all the same. So they'll be placed um, on the one side of the um, pouch. And then this other piece is actually going to become a little bag so all of these are gonna get stitched together, the lining pieces, then we're gonna sew them right sides together with the canvas, turn it inside out, and then finish constructing the bag. So I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of what we're gonna be doing. So as I do it, it makes me a little bit more sense. Um, hopefully I remembered in the introduction to remind you that we've um, done the height of our bag based on just kind of standard makeup brushes. If your brushes are a little bit longer or maybe a little bit shorter, you can always adjust the pattern accordingly. Of course, you may need to adjust the amount of fabric that you need as well, but I just wanted to give you that bit of an overview before we get started. 
So here we have at the ironing board the two pieces that are the same size. And one of them we're going to, like I said, we're going to fold it kind of along the length, um, right sides together, so we have the nice fresh yellow print facing out. And just press that in half. I've got my iron set for um, a cotton setting with steam. Now once you've done that, we can pin, this is the pocket, the piece we just pressed. Uh, we can place it on top of um, the regular lining piece. I'm going to spin this around so you can see it. Um, it may be hard for you to tell, but this print actually is directional. Some of the sunglasses, all the sunglasses are going the same direction and we don't want them upside down um, when we're making our pocket. So just make sure if you're using a directional print that all of the things are right side up when you're looking at it. Um, let me show you. This way, if that makes sense, all the things are going into the pocket at the bottom. And once you've got everything aligned the way you want it, on those three edges that we're going to be basting, we're just going to pin it in place first, just so nothing moves before we bring it to the sewing machine. Now, I don't often sew with pins myself, um, but we are trying to make this as beginner friendly as possible. And we want you to have success with your project, so please use as many pins as you would like. Then I'm going to meet you at the sewing machine to baste the pocket in place. So we're going to start basting um, around the edge of our pocket. You can see the folded edge of our pocket here. So starting from the right hand side of our, right -hand side of our pocket, uh, we're going to use about a quarter inch seam allowance and a longer stitch length. I'm going to remove that first pin once I've got um, my pocket under the machine. And I'm not going to back stitch here because this is just basting. And I'm just going to sew, removing the pins as I go. And I'm going to leave my needle down at the corner, raise my presser foot, turn my work, Continue sewing along the bottom of our pocket. Again, removing the pins as I go. This basting, um, you may think, oh, do I need to baste? It's like, it's gonna make the rest of the sewing so much easier because none of this work will slide around. corner again we've left the needle down in our work raise the presser foot pivot our work and continue sewing back to the top of the other pocket of the same pocket on the other side and then I'm just gonna kind of move pivot my work and just stitch right off the edge my thread so there is our pocket completed. So the next part is actually a really easy step. We're going to join our piece that has our pocket to the piece that will become the little bag that we're going to be attaching to our um, makeup kit. Um, so basically again we, if you're working with a directional print please make sure that the direction of the print is all facing the same way and that um, seam down the middle um, we're just going to put our pieces right side together and I'm going to pin those together and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So we're going to be sewing that seam that we just pinned. Um, I'm going to adjust my machine back to the normal stitch length. We normally use 2.5. Um, I'm again going to be removing pins as I go. This time because we're actually sewing we're not just basting I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance. All the seam allowances for this project are a half inch. So I'm lining up the edge of my fabric uh, with the half inch line. 
I'm going to be back stitching this because I want it to hold. I just back stitched at the end as well. I didn't want to talk while I was doing that. And then I'm going to trim that off and I'll meet you at the ironing board. So we've just sewn this nice secure seam. So we're going to open that up and press it open. So part of the seam allowance is include the layers of the pocket. So we want those layers to go back toward the pocket. Again, we were using steam that'll make, make our cotton lie nice and flat. So when we turn it over, you can see we actually now have a piece that's the exact same size as our canvas, but now it has this beautiful little pocket for our brushes. So now we are actually ready to join this to our canvas. So I'll meet you um, at the table and we'll pin that together. So we have the piece we just had at the ironing board. We have our piece of canvas, or maybe we're using leather, maybe we're using a reinforced um, interfaced fabric. We're gonna put these right sides together. Like I mentioned before, these should be the same size. And that is, I think, 30 inches by 10 and a half. We're gonna line up all those cut edges and we're gonna pin these together. Now, I don't know if you wanna watch all this pinning. We may just fast forward through this. So once the pins are all in place around the whole um, perimeter of the pouch, we are ready to go to the sewing machine and stitch. So we're gonna be stitching around the outside edge of our bag. We're gonna to have to leave an opening, um, basically like a hole in order to turn the whole thing inside out. So right now I'm looking at the, you remember where we have our seam? There's the shorter piece. It's all just a single layer of fabric with no pocket. So near that corner, I'm gonna start sewing with the half inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna leave an opening when I get back to that point. So I'm gonna show you a little trick at the first corner and then it'll be the same trick at all the other corners. So we'll just kind of speed through that. We are gonna do a back stitch to start. Remove the pins as you go. Don't run over any pins. Now, as we approach the corner, we don't wanna stitch exactly back to a half inch away from the end. We wanna be a little bit more than a half inch and that leaves us a little bit of room Instead of pivoting our work at the full 45 degrees, we're going to pivot, or at the full 90 degrees, I should say, um, we're going to leave room, pivot 45 degrees. So our work is basically um, at an angle. We're going to do one stitch, and then we're going to pivot the rest of the way. Now that is some expert advice, especially for a beginner sewer. It's going to give you a really nice, beautiful, Corner. If we stitch right to the corner, it's hard to turn the corners completely inside out. So that's a pretty expert tip for you beginner sewers. Like I said, we're gonna be leaving this part open for us to turn it inside out, um, but we will do it back stitch where we stop sewing. So I'm gonna show you how to trim the seam allowances and the corners, and then we can turn our bag inside, right side out. So here we are at the ironing board. We're gonna do our trimming and turning and pressing all at the same time. So we always want, um, when we're gonna be turning something that has a corner um, inside out, we wanna trim those corners. You wanna go, fairly close, but not too close, because if you go too close, um, your fabric may fray out and do that yucky frayed edge. So um, basically, I'm going to trim about a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch away from the corner. I'm gonna do that at each of the corners. The other thing I want to show you is that we want to grade the seam allowance. If we just turn the whole thing inside out right now and all the seams are exactly the same length, there's going to be kind of like a step inside where all of the seams 
end. So what we want to do is actually trim one of the fabrics in our seam allowance down a little bit shorter so that when we turn it inside out, there's kind of a gradual um, kind of <laughs> the bulk is kind of at the edge and then it kind of gets less and less towards the inside of the garment. So to do that, again, this is called grading seam allowances. I'm just going to pick up the seam allowance of our lining. So for us, that's our printed fabric. And I'm just going to be trimming the seam allowance to about half the width that it was. Again, you can see that I'm just trimming the lining fabric. I'm not touching the royal blue canvas. It's nice that we've got a high contrast fabric here so you can see the difference. Now I'm trimming, trimming over where we had basted the pocket and I've removed the seam allowance from the pocket as well. But I do want to mention something when we get close to our opening where we're going to turn. Um, so I'll pick up there in just a second. So as I mentioned, we don't actually want to trim the seam allowance around our little opening. We kind of need to know where that half inch line is so that when we turn this right side out, we know where to press um, it closed. So I'm going to trim a little bit near the opening so that things are nice and flat near the corner. And then I'm going to continue on the other side of the opening. All those scraps out of the way. So there we have our piece with our, trim, our seam allowances trimmed. We're going to turn our work in right side out. I just want to say inside out. Um, so we'll be able to see the nice bright side of our print. Take your time with this. No need to uh, rush. is always the fun part of a project where things start to actually look like the thing they're intended to be. So once you have it turned right side out, it's really important that we um, get nice sharp corners. So at each of the corners, um, you could use a point turner. I didn't mention it in the um, instructions. But uh, if you have a point turner at home, or you could potentially use a pencil <laughs> if you have one, don't use anything sharp. Don't be tempted to stick your scissors inside here because that could just lead to a hole and a lot of unhappiness. So I'm going to just grab a pencil. I don't have a point turner handy. But if you kind of take your point turner, here, let's do it with a closer. You can just basically force those corners out a little bit more so that they're nice and sharp. Kind of just wiggling the corners helps to kind of get those seams fully rolled out as well. Now with this corner where I've got all of the seam allowances from the pocket, it's a little bit thicker. That's okay, we're still going to get a nice sharp point. And once you've got those rolled out, then we just want to make sure that all the seams are rolled around nicely as well. You basically don't want to have a ridge. Um, you want it fully turned around and then once it is turned around, you can press it in place. Pressing is always a very important part of sewing. It helps your work stay flat when you're doing the next step. So once we have this all pressed, uh, we're actually gonna start marking our little pockets for our brushes. So I'm just gonna continue this and then I'll meet you uh, where we can mark the pocket. So here we have our keys with the nice beautiful blue on the other side. Our pocket is this way, so the bottom of the bag is facing me. Uh, we still have our opening open. We're not going to worry about that for right now. What we're going to worry about is putting in the uh, channels for our, um, our brushes. 
So this is basically making individual pockets for each brush. I'm going to start at our seam in the middle. I'm using my um, mat as a guide and I've got my trusty tailor shock with me. So I'm going to do two inch increments for each pocket. If you are making, um, you know, for yourself and you've got specific size brushes, by all means, please customize the spacing to suit your needs. This is just kind of an approximate thing that we're doing. Uh, we're using two inches. Now this part of the bag is 17 inches. So you guessed it, 17 divided by two is not an even number. So the last pocket, it's actually gonna be three inches, which is nice. If you've got kind of one of those larger fan brushes, like a blush brush, um, powder brush, um, you'll have a nice big pocket at the end for that. Once you have marked the channels, let's put pins through all the layers. So we're gonna be stitching through all the layers. So near the top of the pocket, you definitely wanna secure uh, the pocket in place near each of your channel marks. Now once we have all of these pins in place, we're gonna head back to the sewing machine and we're gonna do a ton of top stitching. So be ready, lots of top stitching coming your way. So here we have our piece, we're at the machine, we have all of our pins in place. Now remember that we have our opening that we haven't closed yet. So let's get that taken care of. We're gonna start sewing kind of um, just before that opening. Now this is all gonna get folded into the bag at the end. So if you have stops and starts here, it's really not gonna show. So we're gonna start. Now we're gonna use pretty small uh, seam allowance. Um, we're gonna have about a quarter inch from the edge of our fabric. So this is a really good practice for you to practice edge stitching. That's what we're calling. We're stitching really close to the edge, called edge stitching. It's, a par it's, it's top stitching because we're sewing from the top. We're not sewing from the inside. Um, but yeah, edge stitching because we're close to the edge. So you can start with the back stitch and continue. If you want to put some pins in, it's a really short distance. Um, I'm not going to, but if you're more comfortable pinning that first, that's okay. It's all kind of pressed in place already, so we should be pretty good to go. So just like that, our opening is now closed. Now when we get to this corner, we are gonna leave our needle down and pivot so we can continue down the next side. So make sure you're keeping all of the pocket pieces nice and flat as we sew. We don't want kind of anything to kind of sag. Now, to create our channels, when we get to our marking, I'm actually gonna pivot and stitch up um, around that chalk line or your fabric marker line, pretty close to that. Now on my presser foot, um, it might be hard for you to see, but about an eighth of an inch over um, to the right of my needle is this tiny little red mark. And I'm gonna use that as a guide for stitching around my chalk marking. So I'll just line up that marking with the little red mark on my presser foot. We're gonna stitch right close to that folded edge at the top of our pocket. We're gonna pivot our work. We're gonna do one stitch and then we're going to continue back down. Again, using that um, little red guide to make sure we're doing a nice, beautiful straight line. Now this double stitching is gonna make our pockets really secure and they're being stitched through all the layers right through to our canvas. So these pockets are gonna be um, really good. You'll have these uh, brushes until the rest of your life. So all of these pockets will be exactly the same process. I told you there was lots of top stitching coming your way. So that is the last of the stitching for the pockets that we need to do. This little, uh, where the seam is, is actually gonna get secured 
when we make our little pouch. So don't worry about that, we'll just continue edge stitching. So we're coming back to the point where we started with our back stitch. We're gonna do another back stitch where we're stopping. There's a piece with all of our little pockets for our brushes. Now we're ready to move on and create that little pouch I've been talking about. And we're gonna be doing a really simple method of putting in a zipper. So, just so you know where we are with the bag, here are all of the pockets. So now we're dealing with this side of the bag without the pockets, and we're gonna be creating a little pouch here, and we want it to be a zippered pouch so we can keep things inside of it um, that will stay away from our brushes. Um, so we actually want to apply the zipper to the top of our canvas. So I'm just gonna flip this over. Again, we're kind of dealing with um, the edge here. We're just going to be doing a really simple me method. Uh, we're going to put the zipper on top of the fabric. We basically want the edge of the teeth to kind of line up with the edge of the canvas here. So I'm going to use pins. I'm just going to start um, by folding back the tape on the one side of the zipper that I'm gonna be sewing to start with. I'm lining up that little metal um, stopper with the, set, with the edge of the canvas. And I'm gonna put a pin in there. I'm gonna actually open up the zipper so I can see where the teeth are sitting. And I'm gonna put in more pins. Again, lining up the teeth with the edge of the pouch. I'm putting pin in through all the layers. Again, you can put in as many pins as you like. Even me, who doesn't sew with pins generally, um, want to do this to hold the zipper in place while I'm sewing. And again, just like we did with the tape at the other end for the stopper, we're going to fold back the zipper tape at the top and pin that in place. So you want to see how that pinned everything's secure. Because we're going to be starting sewing from the bottom, I'm actually going to close the zipper um, so that the, the head of the zipper will be out of the way while we're sewing. Now we can move to the sewing machine. So like I said, we're going to start sewing from the bottom of the zipper. Um, now please note there is like this heavy metal thing at the bottom of the zipper. We want to be very careful not to hit that with our needle. That can break our needle. Um, you never know where the needle's going to fly. So please be very, very careful. Um, if you'd like to change to a zipper foot, you can do that. My machine, um, I can actually move my needle position. So I'm going to actually move the needle over to the left so I can get closer to the zipper while I'm sewing. So I've got my presser foot right up against the teeth. Once the, I'm in place, I'm actually gonna put my needle down into my work and I'm gonna remove that first pin. I'm gonna back stitch to make sure this is nice and secure. And then I'm gonna continue sewing, keeping my presser foot really close to the edge of the zipper teeth. Removing the pins as I go. So this is not your typical zipper application. So if you're thinking making yourself a pair of pants or something, do not use this method. Now, as we get closer to the top, I had mentioned that the zipper head is gonna get in the way. So what I'm gonna do is leave my needle in my work right now. I'm gonna raise my presser foot. I'm gonna open the zipper. So that'll get the zipper head out of the way. And then I'm gonna put my presser foot back down Continue sewing right to the top of my zipper. Again, I've got one more pin that I need to get rid of. Make sure that your zipper tape stays nice and secure, hidden out of the way, and that the teeth of your zipper are still lined up with the edge of your canvas. When I get to the edge, I'm gonna go right to the edge and I'm gonna backstitch. Everything will be super secure. Of course, I didn't bring my scissors with me, but anyway, 
That is step one of securing our zipper. So once we have the zipper secured on the one side, we now need to secure it to our bag. So remember we have a seam here. We're gonna use that seam as the guide for the edge of the other side of our zipper. So just like we did with the other um, side of the zipper, we're going to fold back the tape at the top. We're gonna to line that folded edge with the top of our bag, put a pin in through all the layers, and again, we're just, um, just like we did kind of lining up the zipper teeth with the edge of the bag, we're lining up the edge of the zipper with the seam in our bag. And this is where that last pocket is getting secured. So we'll be stitching through all the layers. It'll hold the zipper in place and hold that last pocket in place. So to, in order to pin the bottom part of the zipper, I'm closing it to get the head out of the way so I can access the little bit of tape at the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. I've tucked the tape underneath. And of course, if you are adjusting the size of your bag to um, accommodate for larger, um, larger brushes, then you'll need a longer zipper. So there we have, that's pinned in place. So I'm gonna open the zipper again so it's easier to access um, this side of the zipper tape. Again, when we're finished stitching um, at the bottom, we'll have to close the zipper um, just like we did with the other side, but I can show you that when we're at the sewing machine. So we've got our edge of our zipper lined up with our seam. We're gonna start sewing kind of um, close to that top folded edge of the zipper tape. Again, we're going to have the um, presser foot of the sewing machine just to the right of our zipper teeth. I'm gonna walk the needle into with the zipper tape. I'm gonna remove that first pin. So now the sewing machine needle is holding everything in place. I'm gonna start sewing with a back stitch. I'm gonna continue making sure that the edge of the presser foot is lining up against the edge of the zipper tape, or zipper teeth. And just like we did last time, um, as we get closer to where the zipper head is, we're going to raise our presser foot. We're going to, in this case, close the zipper to get the head out of the way. Put the presser foot back down. Continue sewing, remove the last pin. Make sure that that tape is nice and secure, tucked under. We're going to do a back stitch at the end to secure everything. This time I actually have my scissors with me. So there we go. Um, as you can see, this is not exactly the most perfect pouch yet. Um, it's totally open, <laughs> so we need to close that. Um, I'm gonna show you how to pin that closed. We're gonna do a fun little pleat to give the bag a little bit of volume. So I'll meet you in just a sec to do that. So here we have the bag. If everything we want it to be laying flat, we're gonna make a couple of marks. Um, and that is gonna be an inch and a half over from the folded edge of our pouch here. So I'm just gonna use my ruler and my chalk to mark an inch and a half. I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. Flip this over, do exactly the same thing. Mark an inch and a half from the folded edge. Now what I'm gonna do with those markings is those are gonna become my fold lines to create some depth to this little pouch. So if I fold this back using, you can see there's a mark here and there's a mark here. I'm just gonna fold that back. I'm gonna kinda just press it in place with my fingers. And then I'm gonna bring the other mark to that point. Sandwich bags or lunch bags, even shopping bags, there's always like that little pleat near the bottom and that gives you a little bit more depth in your pouch. So once you've done that, pin through all the layers. All we have to do now is sew that little side seam to secure the ends of our pouch. Pin through all the layers 
It's going to be a lot for your sewing machine to get through, so we're going to stitch nice and slowly. We might even just kind of wheel the needle forward. But once you have those pins in place, I'll meet you at the sewing machine to do that final bit of top stitching. So we're going to start sewing from that little kind of pleated edge. Um, again, like I said, we're going through a lot of layers, so give your machine a little bit of a break. Um, you might just want to kind of walk your needle into all of these layers. We're going to try and stitch right in the same seam that we did before so we don't have any additional uh, stitching. I'm going to put my needle through. I'm going to start actually um, by back stitching towards the folded edge. Um, don't forget we've got the zipper head that we're heading towards so I'm gonna get that right out of the way now we also have the zipper stops at the top so we just want to be extra careful not to sew over those we're also going to remove pins as we go safety first everybody so I'm just gonna hand walk those last few stitches so I don't go crazy and then I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to do exactly the same thing, just kind of backwards on the other side. Now again, we can't get this little stopper out of the way, so we just have to be really cautious of where um, our needle is going. is kind of the really bulky part. To get close to the folded edge, we're going to do a back stitch. Is the second little side seam completed? So I'm just going to remove that other pin. So as you can now see, we have a little working pouch that has a lot of room for all of the stuff we want to store um, that's going to go with our makeup brushes. Remember that long two inch strip that we cut at the beginning of the video? We're finally going to use it. This is going to become um, the kind of strap to hold our pouch um, together. So we're going to uh, use a method we've used previously to create kind of basically like a double folded um, little strap. So I'm going to first of all just um, iron a little bit of this two inch piece in half. So now it's an inch wide. I've got a nice long pin and I'm going to stick the pin, just the tip of the pin through my ironing board. Then I'm going to slide my strip underneath the pin and then I'm going to force the pin back into the ironing board right on the other side. So now I have kind of like a forced one inch wide little strip there. Then I'm going to slide my strip so instead of being folded in half, it's folded with the raw edges, those cut edges, facing each other. So there we have it with a little bit of kind of manipulating. I now have the same one inch width, but now the two raw edges are facing each other. And this is just going to be a really handy way, instead of having to like press everything perfectly and risk burning my fingers, I'm just going to um, press that and then I can slide it through the pin. It forces those two raw edges together and I'm getting a beautiful little one inch wide kind of this is actually so far single fold but then I can take this piece and fold it in half again and have a beautiful double fold half inch wide strip so we did kind of remember cut the full width of our fabric which was like 58 inches wide so we probably don't need a tie that's that long, but I will just fold it 
and stitch it, and then we'll figure out how long we need it. Um, it's always better to have more than less. We don't want to be caught short. Just make sure that those raw edges are continuing to kind of be even on both sides. Once you have enough that you can kind of not burn yourself, you can actually pull the strip through underneath the iron and it'll kind of go automatically. You might want to guide it a little bit to make sure that those raw edges are staying centered. And we're just going to continue doing that until we've pressed the whole strip. So once we have all of our single folding done, now we're going to bring the two folded edges together and we're just going to press that in half. So now we have a perfect little double fold. We're just going to stitch those folded um, edges together at the one edge and then we can cut our strip to size and attach it to our pouch. So we've got our strip folded in half. Um, we've got these two folded edges that we're now going to uh, stitch together. Um, again, we're edge stitching, so we're going to be pretty close to that folded edge. Um, so use your presser foot as a guide. So we're just doing a straight stitch um, about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. So let's figure out how much of this long strap we actually need. You may want to like stuff something like into your pouch um, just to kind of fill it up a little bit, kind of get an idea of what's going to be inside, how bulky it's going to be. Um, then we're just going to kind of roll it. If we can, I'd like to be able to kind of wrap it twice to make it more secure. So we're just going to do that really loosely, kind of anticipating that there will be more stuff in it in the future. So really we don't need to lose that much. I think if we take off like a total of 10 inches from our strap, we're going to be good and still have lots of room. Um, if we do have a ton of stuff in the bag, uh, we can always just wrap it around singly, but probably just removing 10 inches from this strap is going to be good. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to like tack uh, the ends after they're cut um, so that they don't fray out afterwards, but I can do that at the sewing machine and then I can tack it to the bag at the same time. So here we have just that raw cut edge of our strap. Now I don't mind that we have the raw edge, but over time it may want to fray out. So I'm just going to kind of on that last kind of half inch or so, three eighths of an inch of the strap, I'm going to stitch across the end of it. And back stitch, and front stitch, and back stitch. And that'll just really, um, even if it does fray, which I don't mind the look of, um, it won't fray past the stitching. I can quickly do that at the other end. So we've got our strap figured out for the length and we basically um, want to tack the strap to close to the last pocket. So here we have our last pocket. We actually want to stitch it on the canvas side but we want to sew it in the center. So let's fold the end of our pouch in half to find that center point. We're going to mark that center point with a pin. We're just going to put that aside. Then we're going to take our strap and fold it in half to find the center point of the strap. And we can mark that with a pin as well. So if we bring our pouch back and we open out our strap, we want those two points to overlap. So I can remove the pin from the one and then remove the pin from the other and we know that we're kind of centered on the strap and centered on the pouch.
depth. And just like we did with the ends of our strap, we're going to stitch back and forth um, to really secure the sewing. Um, I'm stitching kind of the same distance I did than we, like when we did the edge stitching. It's about a quarter inch from the edge. And back there. And that should really secure our strap in place. So that is all of the sewing, folks. So let's do the big reveal and see what our pouch looks like. So here we have our finished pouch. We have put a few brushes in, and as we mentioned in the intro, we do also have some of our fun makeup removers that are reusable and fun flannelette prints. So I'm just gonna zip that closed, show you how uh, convenient and portable this is. We can just roll it up. We can wrap the straps around a couple of times, tie it up, and we are good to go on the run with our makeup brushes. I hope you enjoyed this content today and that you'll have a chance to give it a try. If you really love the fun fabrics that we use as much as I do, you can find them on our website at fabricana.com as well as lots of other great fabrics for quilters, for sewers, for bridal enthusiasts. Um, so lots of fun stuff there. Uh, if you are making things uh, with our fabrics, please feel free to use the hashtag CreateWithFabricana. Uh, we'll be sure to share that on our Instagram page. You can also follow us on Facebook. There's lots of great content there. And of course, if you're enjoying this video content here on YouTube, uh, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any content. There's lots of great stuff for people who are into sewing, into crafting, into home decor, uh, into quilting, knitting. Uh, we have it all. We try to have it all. So thank you so much for joining us and we will see you soon. And as we always say here at Fabricana, so true and be you.